Hi friends. Welcome to another monthly faves showcasing September. This was a great makeup month. I didn't have many favorites in August because I knew when fall hit, or excuse me, autumn, autumn rolled in the makeup was also going to come in tsunami style because i had a lot of products on my radar and i'm happy to say the ones that i did that i purchased i am beyond happy with but as you know i love to speak about other items besides makeup and i have to start with lifestyle you might notice that i have a cardigan on. I spoke about and mentioned steady hands on my channel before, but I had to mention them again because now that it is autumn, I get to wear my sweaters and my boots and my jeans and I get to layer up as I like, but I could not wait to just wear my cardigans in the crispy autumn weather and i have my gyu tomioka sweater uh the water hashira from demon slayer kimetsu no yaiba one of the best designs because let me tell you something you don't have to watch demon slayer or even know where this pattern is from to fall absolutely in love with it all puns intended because of the color scheme okay i don't know why the palette of the sweater screams 70s style living room <laughs> like with the drop stairs i think it's called what is it called it's like the media pit something like that i saw in a pinterest photo with the rusty oranges and the marigolds the maroon the burgundy this color palette is so exceptionally perfect for the season and i received so many compliments on my sweater this is the crop version i also have the standard size version if i want it more of like a oversized feel this is the small medium which i think nice for the cropped length i absolutely adore it i've been wearing the heck out of my cardigans i have been so happy just with my typical autumn uh, ensemble which is my rag and bone jeans that i bought more pairs of so i think i featured one pair months ago during the summertime and i waited because i love the style so much that i wanted more washes and i waited until they were final sale and i bought my sizes and that has just been my go-to outfit my dr martin boots one of my steady hand cardigans maybe a little crop some on the top and my jeans i'm so happy with these pieces especially my cardigans and i never was one to wear cardigans perhaps i didn't fully grasp the style concept of wearing it oversized versus just your size i think the oversized silhouette has a little more of a trendy feel to it i'm not sure how long that will last but i do favor it i think it's a great look especially if you pair it with a cropped top or maybe you don't maybe you also pair it with something oversized underneath no matter where you go i'm telling you man these cardigans hit especially again this style i'm telling you demon slayer might not be recognized as one of the best animes of all time i know that like there are other contenders for that title like one piece and naruto you you'll get lost in all the arguments in the anime comments my goodness but the character designs from demon slayer and the color palette perfect for merch the fact that you don't even need the character's face on any of these pieces to recognize who is representing is outrageously good. I also wanted to share a food item. These are from Patagonia. Who knew that a camping, well, I say camping brand, but uh, a clothing brand I recognized to be initially was just a general one. And they have their own tin food category. These are the lemon herb mussels, and here are the Spanish white anchovies. Now, many of you might be like, ew. But listen, I'm all about highlighting foods that are nutritionally dense, that could probably service for the better and i also like to highlight not what we should not be eating because we clearly see that messes with our heads a little bit what can we add to our menu that is nutrient dense that is metabolically advantageous to us i know for myself i wanted to add more protein to my diet so i had to diversify my menu and get over the fact that tin fish initially might have been 
gross to me because I did not fully grasp the importance of its nutrient profile and how incredibly important they can be in for our diet. And I got over that, started with the sardines and then went into the mussels and the oysters and the, oh my gosh, these right here, these right here are so good. If you want something like vinegary, that's the vinegary tang for the white anchovies, outrageously good. And if you want something more savory, like garlicky, herby, ooh, the mussels, delicious. I'll have these with my eggs, or I have it with my health coach shake uh, middle of the day, or if I feel like I need like a protein serving throughout the day, I'll just reach for these. Listen, I'll be the one, okay? <laughs> eating these out of a tin with chopsticks. Because before I would have reached for a granola bar or something very high carb that, sure, maybe will serve a purpose if I were training, but it didn't have any protein, very low in protein, and it would have just led to varied glycemic spikes throughout the day where I would get this like super high when consuming it, and a hour or two later, I would just feel super fatigued, will crave more of that food and low energy and I just didn't want to feel like that anymore. And I learned that depending on what type of food you consume will determine how your body reacts to it, right? So I decided to add more high protein sources into my diet. And it's funny, I think people forget that uh, protein foods, uh, animal-based foods do also have nutrients. Your veggies have the nutrients, your fruits have the nutrients, but so, do your protein sources and I think we forget that and maybe limit our protein sources too small. I know for myself I try to aim at 30 to 50 grams of meal and I have my three meals a day, sometimes four depending, and I haven't felt better. I feel better now at 37 than I did uh, 10 years ago or even more so years ago. And I had to share because <laughs> I spent so much money on these, I got the 10 the 10 box pack and I'm running low and I'm about to spend like what I would spend on makeup easily on food. But this is where we are, fam. This is this is the new Alicia, hello. Moving into skincare, funny how I encountered this product. I am a subscriber to Renee of Gothamista and I saw Renee's video alert pop up on my phone and read that she was coming out with an essence collaboration with Saro de Roo. And I was like, what is that about? I probably saw five, seven minutes of the video and I was sold. I'm like, Renee, what, whatever it is, sign me up. And I'm happy that I did grab the collaboration Essence product with Saro de Roo and Gothamista. When Renee was speaking about the Hong Bong and the process through which the Essence ingredients went through to ensure the best potency and efficacy for not anti-aging, but protective against the elements and the approach to Saro de Roo, which I haven't heard of before. I saw Renee's video, so happy to now have that brand on my radar. But everything she was describing about the essence, the process, her intentions in trying to create this perfect essence because Renee loves her essences, I was sold immediately, grabbed it quickly, and happy that I did when I saw that, yes, it was there was going to be a restock, but it was out of stock. Happy the package was minimalist. You have the cap, the glass bottle, and you can scan this for more product information instead of having another paper pamphlet in the package. And the package itself is just the box that houses or rather holds the bottle, and it's all cardboard, so incredibly easy to recycle. So I appreciate the thoughtfulness from packaging, how it was delivered to how the actual product is designed. You have the label here if you want to know the ingredients. So very compact in that way, very thoughtful in that way. I've been using the Essence ever since I received it. And what I love most about it, it's the dispensing where the actual Essence has a little bit of viscosity to it, but it doesn't pour out. You just have to do one of these to allow the right amount to come out and it has a lovely texture to it very cushiony and feels like it's hugging my skin and the actual scent there's no artificial fragrance no essential oils you smell 
I just think the the herbaceousness of the Hong Bong, it doesn't smell overwhelming. It just envelops my face in a way that's very comforting. The texture is silky, beautifully easy to apply and a pleasure to apply as Renee emphasized when describing what she wanted in an essence in this collaboration. And I think she achieved all the things that an essence can and what is expected to do beyond that also cosmic level experience with this essence we got nail polish although i have the moon cat hocus pocus 2 collaboration on which i absolutely love that's going to be for october because it came in october i'm wearing them now in october i have been wearing the heck out of the Hollow taco linear holographic nail polish specifically the dark rainbow collection this for myself, I hold Magnetic Multichrome above Linear Hollow for me. It's just something I prefer. But when it's these deep, rich colors, my goodness, I'll put up some videos that I took. I think the only one I didn't wear was Crimson Red, but I could only suspect it's gonna be gorgeous. Definitely my favorite shade, unfortunately, that I don't have here. Do I have here? Yes, I do. Amber Apathy? Amber Apathy. I think is gonna be the underdog shade, okay? It looks cool in the bottle. It looks cool in the bottle, but when you apply this polish, and also the polish itself, after two coats, opaque. You don't need three or four, okay? Full bodied pigmentation nail polish coverage you'll receive with this linear hollow formula. And Amber Apathy, it's like this burnt antique, rusty, like, I don't want to say gold. It's like a, a bronze, but gold bronze. <laughs> okay, alchemy. It's a beautiful color. Alongside Dead Petals. Dead Petals I immediately subscribe to because that concept I felt perfectly described in Tasha Denona's retro palette, the midi size palette. The cool burgundy my goodness me a beautiful collection and i do prefer the dark colors over the original rainbow collection and the pastel collection those are really nice too i have both boxes and now i have all three linear hollow collections from hollow taco but this is by far my favorite if i had to wear a hollow or choose to wear one it will be in these shades just dark rich just this <laughs> This is what's happening in the nail polish. I think after I wear all the shades from Mooncat's collaboration with Hocus Pocus 2, I might go back to the Linear Hollow Dark Rainbow Collection because again, the nail polish itself, easy to apply, full coverage after two coats. And when the light hits these mothers, it's just to die for, it's to die for. Brushes without a doubt, so Najis jumbo bronzer one of the best bronzer brushes i think i have in my collection and i know i am partial to sonya g i love her as a person i know her as a person uh you know our exchanges are always so pleasant and kind i mean she is the kindest sweetest person on earth and her brushes i think again are just so thoughtful in design and in concept and the jumbo bronzer I mean, the way that this brush just stays fluid and synchronized in blend, but it's so fluffy and I would say moderately dense at the same time. Usually with bronzer brushes, sometimes they're too dense and it picks up your foundation and leaves behind a spotty, uneven blend. This just floats against the skin in a way that's beautifully seamless. It keeps the bronzer product on and it delivers that perfect like classic three shape blend when applying a bronzer powder. I adore this brush and have been using it all month with different types of bronzers. As you saw, I used this brush to apply my Gucci bronzers for the demo in that video. And again, it just delivers the perfect dose without it looking too overwhelmingly made up, you know? But the softness 
and the directness I think is what's so special about this design. Again, sometimes when the brush is so fluffy, it's unpredictable in terms of how the bronzer is gonna turn out. This you'll know how the product will look because the surface area of the brush just stays in contact with your skin. And again, it doesn't splay so far out that the makeup will also travel and then the end result is just this and we want this getting a little hot i love my sweater but the window's closed and oh my god i also have to mention the bishoto grand series this is their cheek brush fude beauty was very kind to send me the collection and i do have a video on it if you want to take a look incredibly soft this is bishoto's first brush collection using gray squirrel and funny compared to the jumbo bronzer this is dyed undyed goat hair so a lot more pickup a little more blending power whereas this is just going to offer up a softer serving of powder if you're one to favor that more air light application of powder very soft on the skin then definitely take a look at the bishoto series and i also wanted to show how everything is packed each brush has its individual foam sleeve and box yeah this is a super super luxe experience and i will also mention the chikohoro z series contour brush which i blasphemously said during my hourglass video and surprise this is also favorite i was saying how this brush was smaller than the yano series contour brush and would have been a little tricky to apply bronzer there it's not i mean this is all made with gray squirrel and when i actually tried it took some powder and then swirled and twirled into the deep hollow regions of my cheeks to get a little more dimension there with this bronzer I've been using the heck out of this brush, not only in the hollows, but taking some bronzer down the edges of my nose, here under the lash line. This is just a perfect brush. Very smooth. Look at that. I don't know why when I had first tried it, I just think I was not courageous enough. I didn't want to give it a shot. I felt it would have moved my foundation, but shame on me. This is a gray squirrel. It's not... <laughs> It's not going to move. It's going to glide over your foundation. It will not move anything and leave behind a spotty blend. It's completely and utterly smooth. Now, I would only use this brush with a powder that you wanted to build intensity with, like the one found in the Hourglass palette. Maybe not so much the Gucci bronzer, because that itself, well, depending on the color. Number two, I think out of the three are, it's just my favorite. It has a toastiness to it that I love because it offers up that sculpt at the same time warmth. I also love this tone of a bronzer from the Hourglass palette. And why not, I, let's just segue into that, shall we? The Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Palette. I use this palette every day it was just the finishing powders to set my concealer the bronzer well you know what i actually just ended up using everything the fact that these powders look the way they do no matter how many layers you apply there's a radiance to it a luminosity it looks beyond smooth on the skin i love the color the bronzer color the blushes Oof, the highlighter. And I do have B-roll applying the original ambient lighting edit unlocked. And I do prefer the bronzer from this one. Only because it is a little toastier. It just has like, it definitely has more of a sculpt as well as the blush shades, Mood Flush and Nude Glow, I believe. The Mood Flush is this muted plum shade and the Nude Glow is not overly pink or overly coral, is right in the middle. And yes, the highlighter is a little more icy on me, but I do love the shades in the original as well. Now, the Tiger Palette one has more of the vibrant pinks, which again, this was a custom order. I ordered the Tiger Palette palette with palette one if you were to purchase this palette as is it will be palette two with the copper tones in here i'm very happy i stuck to this choice i swatched the tiger palette with the already copper shades in there twice and each time it reinforced the fact that i was correct in ordering this palette for the medium skin tones and not buying that one as well before i wanted to buy all three i said no please just choose 
the palette design that speaks to you the most. Choose the palette colors that will best suit your skin tone and stop with this. I can make it work business, okay? You have a budget, stick to it, please. You know how many sweaters you have in your closet right now. This was just a pleasure to use all month. I will continue using this palette. It just makes it extremely easy to pack for makeup and that I don't have to pack a separate bronzer, finishing, highlighter, cheek products, it's all here. And while I understand if I wanted to mix it up, I do have the Gucci Luminous Matte Blush 06 Warm Berry outrageously beautiful shade. I just adore how this blends. I have it on my cheeks now with the bronzer from Hourglass. It's so lovely. I was surprised. I thought I would have bought the pinkier shades, that rose beige shade. No, this shade is incredibly versatile, so easy to apply, looks soft on the skin, and as I mentioned in my Gucci video, it's plum, but it doesn't appear bruisey on my cheeks, like muddy on my cheeks. It doesn't drag my complexion down. In fact, it enlivens it with that undertone. Again, the texture is super silky, easy to blend with a variety of different brushes and bristle types. And I think it's a beautiful compact. I just went on and on about how lovely the Gucci makeup compacts are with the little stars here. It's small, not the tiniest, but it just feels luxe. And I, ra I, I rather have this on my vanity than like a Benefit blush box. As much as I love Tara, I prefer this packaging. Absolutely. And lastly, from Hourglass, I'm sure many people have already included the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation in previously released monthly favorite videos, but I bought mine last month, okay? I waited just to kind of chill on the foundation buying, and I do have a video showing three shades of the Hourglass Foundation. I decided to return number 12 and I did go on about saying how I felt bad returning the foundation since I already returned the house labs one. I already submitted my request. I thought long and hard about which ones I should keep. I was only going to keep 11, which was the more neutral undertone, but I decided to also keep 11.5. 11.5 I apply on the center of my face and 11 on the outer perimeters, and both these shades serve me very well. I thought 12, even though it looked great now, once my overall color would change deeper into the winter time, it might have been a little too off. So that's why I stuck with 11, 11.5. 11 by itself would have been fine. I do agree with some of you that it doesn't do a lot to my complexion. It's just the color, right? So there's no vibrancy, no brightness. That's why I kept 11.5 because that peachiness, I think, livens it up a little bit. But what the Hourglass Foundation offers is, for me, security. This just blanks out <laughs> any imperfections without looking heavy, evens out my skin tone, eliminates any hyperpigmentation without me having to use a ton of product. I think you run the risk of the ambient looking a little too made up if you go in heavy handed initially. This foundation shines if you apply layers, light layers. First, one light layer all over the face, evaluate how that's looking, and then lightly dot where you need more coverage and then take it from there. To like glop on a lot on the initial application, I think that will not serve the foundation's texture well. But what I adore about this foundation is that it just stays on the skin without looking dry or overly matte. It ensures longevity and the fact that my complexion will just look perfected all day. And no matter what power I apply there on after, those makeup products will look perfected as well. And again, when you're light-handed and conservative with how much you apply, the freshness and the smoothness, I just think looks better throughout the day. And the color itself balances out what I had mentioned before when just applying 11, it did have a slight gray undertone, but throughout the day, it kind of balanced out to more my complexion but mixing it with 11.5 or simply mixing it with my Auric in Sunstone, 
the cocktail is perfect. Now on the other side of the spectrum, we have the House Lab Skin Tech. Like I mentioned, I returned 340, I think it was what, medium cool? This is 330. 330 is a dead on match. It's neutral with a little bit of olive golden in there. And as one of you had mentioned that the House Labs takes on a truer artistry view on undertones, when trying to figure out which one is your best shade match. So I think Cool has the yellow in it and green. I forgot, I'm sorry, I'm clearly not an artist. But this is a fantastic color match. But the texture, just like the Hourglass gives me that security in terms of evening out skin tone, the House Labs is like an elevated BB cream and it is just so satisfying to apply. I don't know how to articulate that, but when I apply it, it just has this creaminess, milkiness to it that when I blend it onto my skin, it just fuses and is fluid. It kind of just sinks and it's so lovely to apply. This doesn't have the same finish as the Hourglass. I did the side-by-side -side comparisons here. You can see there's a more luminous finish on the house lap side and more of like a, a soft matte satin matte finish on the hourglass side. I do love both. I have worn the house labs for a few hours throughout the day, the hourglass few hours out the day. It's hard to choose. I think depending on your expectations, how you want your foundation to look will determine which one will be your favorite because I still love my NARS. Oh my goodness. I'm going to have to go back and forth and, and really decide. But the House Labs, I think, is a lovely foundation. It's not going to be the same as the Hourglass. If you want a little more coverage, more stain power, not as much of a dew finish, then definitely the Hourglass. But if you want a little bit of coverage, that natural skin finish, a little bit of dew, then the House Labs, I think, Thing is great. I've been using each one interchangeably throughout the month. I've even mixed them together and the results from each, all situations are fantastic. And here we've arrived. The Natasha Denona My Dream Collection. I have the My Dream palette on my eyes. I didn't apply the cheek palette and I agree. Yes, although this might not be my ideal shade, Many of you were very kind to point out that it looked nice on me. For sure, it's not terrible. And yes, I do realize that the cooler mauve, sure, might not be my favorite, my go-to, but it still looked nice on me. Yes, yes, yes. And this cream blush, as I assumed when wearing it and swatching it, is different from her previous cream blush formulas. This has resin in it, which makes it a little bit more dry, but it's still a cream. Right, and again, when you apply this, and I could just do this, listen, I could do this right now. When I apply this on the very inner part of my cheeks, I think it offers up really nice color. And because the color itself is low key, it's not going to look overwhelmingly blushed up on the center of my face. And if I apply this over the Gucci, then the Gucci plum shade will offer up a little boost of color from underneath so that this won't look as cool toned. I do love the cream. The cream highlight is great. That I love. Look at me. I'm just <laughs> going right in here. And the Dream Glow Powder is a newer formula as well. It's more of like a gel to powder, which felt like that when trying it for the first time. And it has just this beautifully glassy finished look on the skin. And I have to say, this is smoother than the Hourglass highlighter. This powder formula looks a lot less highlighted. It just fuses with the skin beautifully and it doesn't sit on my pores. Not that the Hourglass sits on my pores, but there's still a powderiness to the Hourglass that I can detect, that I cannot detect with this Dream Glow powder from the My Dream Trio. What a mouthful. And of course, I have the palette on my eyes. <sighs> Is this my favorite Natasha Denona Midi palette? 
I have not yet decided that. I'm still teetering on bronze and retro. Those are my absolute favorite midis. This though is in heavy contention because of the variety of shades and the fact that the mattes are in this rosy taupe type of realm. No matter how I combine these shades, I adore the look that comes out. And there's like a smoky haziness that's not, that's not too hazy that I love for the day. The mattes are beautifully soft. They're easy to blend, my goodness. Aspiration in black is black. Kind of have to play with the type of brush you use with those powders to ensure that it doesn't look too spotchy because those pack a punch. But the metallics in here, even the cream to powders that come in the maroon and eggplant shades are fun to use if you just want it like a one and done shadow moment through crease lid and, and lower lash line. Very happy with this palette. I've been using it like cray cray. It's fantastic. And yes, I do have the ABH Rose Metals. I think I would have liked to upload that video first before this one. I'm gonna say that for October because that was gifted to me in October and I think only fair that I included in the October month. As well as the Pat McGrath Celestial Nirvana. I just received that palette. I think it came earlier this month too. So you might be looking out for those. But I'm next month, next month. Am I forgetting anything? I very much will might, but what are you gonna do? So that is it, family. A little bit of everything in September. I have to say this month stood out to be one of the best makeup months I ever had. Even if I had to figure out my hourglass shade, the formula itself is just outrageously good. Pleasantly surprised by the house labs, the Gucci blush, everything I mentioned, I have been heavily using and enjoying. I look forward to when I apply makeup. It's just great that I have the tools and the products that will yield the best results. And the colors themselves, I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on and on. With all that to say, the October favors have already started piling up. So I will prepare that list for next month. But in the meantime, let me know what your September favors have been. It doesn't have to be makeup. It could be anything. It could be your favorite food, favorite cardigan. I'll see you down in those comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, monthly favorites, eyeshadow palette tutorial, or maybe a vlog. I really should do a vlog. Take care, and I will see you again soon.